they are. So earlier today, Baylor announced the extension that we've told you about now for the last few weeks about the extension for Dave Aranda, head football coach in his contract. But also word came down of who they will open the 2022 season against and the University of Albany, the Great Danes and their head coach, Greg Gattuso. And he joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. And coach, thank you very much for your time under short notice. Today, of course, the announcement came down. Can you give us a little background on how all of this came about and how Baylor contacted you or vice versa? Well, I just, I, how that all started, I'm not positive. I know there was, you know, there was some availability issues for, for both schools looking for a, a game um, because some other teams, some things that went on. Um, they, you know, my athletic director just called me in and asked me, you know, talk to me about the game. And, and obviously, guarantee games are very important to, to a program at the FCS level. And um, I certainly would uh, probably not pick Baylor as my first choice, but um, I know how good they are and the type of program that they have. But uh, I think that our kids are going to be really fired up about going down to Texas and play. I mean, they're a, they're a top BCS program and, and um, have national championship aspirations. And, you know, we understand that the, what a challenge it is for us. But at the, the second part of that is, it's just a great experience for our kids. And, and uh, you know, we played Syracuse. We played University of Pittsburgh. Um, we played some people at that level. And uh, it's a challenge, but it's also a, a, a fun game for us to get ready for. Well, Coach, uh, State of Texas is looking forward to welcoming you with open arms. Uh, you mentioned, you know, Baylor being successful. What what do you really know about them? I mean, you're obviously worried about your own business, but how much do you even know about the, the Baylor football program? Uh, you know, I, I know they wear green and gold because they were the colors I wore in high school. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, and the boss said that, um, you know, obviously it's a guarantee game. And I said, the only guarantee I need is that I could meet Chip and Joanna Gaines. So, um, <laughs> if I could, uh, if I could meet those two, I'd be, it'd be a hell of a trip for us. Well, they're well, usually at the game. So there's, yeah. there's probably a good chance of that. I think that could probably be worked out as well. Uh, you know, you, you've been a part of big time football. You played on a national championship team at Penn state, and then you've been coaching now for quite some time, including about to be your ninth year at Albany. You mentioned the buy the, 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 uh, the money games where FCS schools have to travel to play against teams in the FBS. And sometimes they can win those games. We've seen what North Dakota state among some others have done. How important is that coach that that never gets to a point where those games dry up and fade away when you see all this thoughts and talk about bigger, better, faster, stronger conferences? Well, look, I've been on both sides of these games. Um, you know, I coached at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I was Dave Wanstead. I coached at the University of Maryland. We played tough games against some FCS schools. Um, you, you know, any any day you have a in an opener and you someone's playing well, you never know, but – um, we were able to beat Buffalo a few years back. Um, we went up there and, and won a tough game, and but it's a long it's a long trip from to, to compare Buffalo to, to Baylor. You know, I think um, Baylor's you know is an elite program right now, and they're they're really I know I know two years ago they were weren't at that level, but last year they were spectacular. I I got to see them play on TV in the bowl season, and I you know I thought they were really good. Um, didn't look at them critically yet. But um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, this is a great experience for our kids. It really is. And, and like I said, I've been on both sides of these games. I've seen, you know, we were at Maryland when Towson came in and we've, we squeaked by 10-9. We beat William & Mary one year 7-6. So I, I get it that, you know, th- these games can be good. But generally, you know, you want to go in and put your best foot forward and stay healthy and, um, and go home and, and build off of it. And that's what, exactly what we're going to try to do. What are those sighs of relief like when you're at a – and I, I can't remember exactly what you just said, but like Maryland and, and you, you edge out Towson. And I know it's early year in the, early games in the year and whatnot. You never really know. But what is that feeling of relief like once the clock finally hits zero and you do eke one of those out? Well, I, I will say this. If you want to see a bunch of tight, nervous people, um, <laughs> see a BCS team going into the fourth quarter with a, <laughs> with a short lead yeah. because it, it can be devastating to a program. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of good football teams out there and, and you never know how pe- things are going to go that day. But at the end, at the end of the day, yeah, you're expected to win those games. And, um, you know, they're, they certainly are going to look at us and we had a rough year last year and, and not probably take us super serious. And, and, um, that's good. I hope they don't. I mean, that's, it's at the end of the day, we've we've been a good program. We've had some good football players. We 
you know, we just put out in, in the transfer portal. We just lost our best defensive player, who's I'm not sure Baylor probably offered him for all I know. Um, named Jared Verst ended up at Florida State. So, you know, we recruit good players and we try to do things the right way and compete hard. And, and uh, that's all we can control in this type of game. We just, I know the speed, the size is one thing, but I know the speed is is the scariest part of it. And uh, I know they're going to be real fast. So we just. Pray for a heavy rain, which I'm sure you don't get much in Waco. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, every once in a while we'll get a downpour. Not much when it's like 100 Not degrees September, outside. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Greg, uh, Coach Catuso, let me ask you this. You mentioned the transfer portal, and I hate to hear that for you. But when that happened, uh, I, I think maybe it just opened up the doors, the floodgates, and now we see that it's just like almost the Wild West. And then a lot of times people forget about the fact that there are schools in your division or in, in, in the FCS that might have an elite player. Then all of a sudden now he gets plucked away. And Carnet Word had their quarterback who now is playing up, I, I guess, at Washington State or wherever he went. Is that something you even thought could be the problem or could end up being a problem for you? Well, I've been in this a long time. And, um, you know, I, I, I really very much worry what we're doing what we're teaching our young people. And, and I, you know, and I will say this, I mean, I, I, I feel like the NCA was such a great organization. They always protected the student athletes. And I just worry that they're not as protected now with um, what, what's going on. And, but the, you know, you, you have to learn to adjust the things, you know, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I pride myself on adjusting to the, whatever environment I'm in and, and doing the best I can in it. I'm not going to sit around and worry about it and complain. We lost a good player or two in the portal, but we went out and signed about eight really good football players um, that have made our depth better right now. So, uh, you know, that you just make the best of situations, and, and uh, I can only worry about what it does for our young people. Uh, you know, the lack of, you know, control of kids moving around the country, I, I just don't know that that's real good for them, but um, certainly out of my control. Coach, uh, in, in only playing four games last year, and I don't know how many people have probably out there as far as like a Baylor audience goes, or and we've got Big Twelve audience and all that. But I don't, I don't know how many people out there have probably seen Albany games. But for those, uh, you know, who are going to be at the game coming up in September, and they want to know what Baylor is going to be facing, how would you describe the Albany football program, y'all's direction, your mentality, and so forth? Yeah, I mean, I think. You know, obviously, I'm not sure anybody in Texas has seen us play, but uh, you know, we we have our following and, and a good group of people that support our program, and um, we're we just we're going to try to play we're going to try to play a really as physical brand of football as we can play. Um, we're going to try to establish a run game. You know, if you're going to have any chance in a game like this, you got to be able to control the clock and try to keep the speed off the field. But that's really tough in these matchups because you you have a deficit up front size wise, and you certainly have a speed deficit. So um, you, you, you know, we're, we're going to try to run the clock, you know, and that's the best thing that we can do is to, you know, in big games is old school football, try to run the football, take some shots, get some big plays and, and, uh, really try to find a way to contain, um, the skill. But like I said, that's a tall order for us because, um, there'll be some matchup problems for sure. And, and they have a group of guys that, um, that can run that, that are going to make big plays, but, uh, Nothing fancy. We're we're uh, we're just going to go out and be really good tacklers and physical football team and, and uh, play our our football best Greg, we can do. Greg, you had that year, of course, the COVID year, one and three. A lot of people didn't get us some big schools that didn't get to play much. It depends on the conference, the part part of the country, uh, how things were looked at. The year before that, you had a nine win season and won a playoff game. I think for the first time in the FCS. How frustrating was it with that 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 momentum, and then all of a sudden you basically don't play any games? It was brutal. You know, I, I you know it, it's heartbreaking to be honest. I mean, we had really built to that 2019 season. We had a good football team. You know, we were really really on the rise. I think you know what people don't realize about being in New York during the pandemic was we we did not have a padded practice in 2020. Um, we did ha we had not one, no, no spring practices, though our work, our, our strength and conditioning, um, we got very, almost nothing formal after March 1st of 2020. So it really sent us into a little bit of, it was tough and I feel bad for my kids. You know, people, it's, I'm not an excuse maker and it's certainly not an excuse. It's a reality. And, and we were hit very hard 
you know, compared to the people of the world and the horrible things that people have gone through mm -hmm. with their families and things, it, it certainly doesn't compare. But in, in our world of football, imagine, imagine Baylor trying to compete after not playing football for a year. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's devastating. We didn't even have our kids on campus for most of it. So um, it was tough. And then to play in the – I don't know, you haven't had a chance to spend – uh, February, March day in Albany in, um, outside. It's, it's not good to play football. It's not conducive <laughs> for it. Trust me. And, uh, so, uh, you know, 2021 was a tough year for, for our football program, but, um, you know, we're, we're just looking forward to, to, you know, we're excited. This is, this is the first off season we've had in three years. We're, we're really excited. I don't think I've ever been more excited about spring practice in my life that, that to get our kids out and start developing, um, I have one starter on my defense coming back that has had a spring practice. So that's the kind of challenges we're trying to overcome. But but I'm excited about it because we're going to get a lot done this spring. We're going to train hard all summer, and, and uh, we're going to we're looking forward to getting to Texas and, and Waco and meeting and Chip and Joanna and playing the, the Baylor football team. Well, you're going to love the stadium and the view as well. Uh, uh, you know, you, you mentioned how that, that just no, no contact, no padded practices and it's football. I, I, you know, it, it, it's hard to even fathom. Um, when, when you say spring drills, when will you guys open up your spring drills? Uh, we start April 1st. Okay. So we're, uh, we're just, like I said, we're really working hard training. We, we feel like we've, we've recovered physically, which is good. Um, you know, that was not having the training was just as bad as not having coach, having practices. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're at this point now where it's awesome to just be out in the field and be able to talk to the kids and spend time with them. We, you know, we, we had a, we, we battled our tails off all fall. We lost a lot of close games in our conference and, and, um, you know, we, we finished decent. But um, it's certainly not acceptable. It's not who we are. We think we've built a better program than being two and nine. And um, you know, unfortunately, that we have a tough opener. But that game, how we approach that game, and how we utilize that will help us for the rest of the season. Yeah, we think it's going to be great motivation uh, as well. But no question, today, tomorrow, and in the next few months, have you ever met or seen Dave Aranda at any kind of coaching clinic? I have not. No. Okay, I was just curious if because you're a defensive guy, uh, and obviously he has climbed the ladder. And in fact, today signed a contract extension through 2029, and has done, as you mentioned, a remarkable job. And you know, we can probably not so much personally relate to what you went through in 2020, but Baylor, as you know, first year head coach, and they couldn't do much. Everything was on Zoom, and they went two yeah. and seven. It was a disaster. They played nine games. But it was uh, I. We kind of, in a way, kind of probably can understand what you're talking about. Yeah, it was it was brutal. I, I you know, the Zoom stuff, and I mean, it, it was. I mean, what we do as coaches is spend time with our players. You know, we spend. I tell parents in recruiting, we're going to spend more time than anybody has ever spent with your child in the next five years. I mean, really, when you think about it, outside of a parent, we spend the most time with them. And when you take that away, it all kind of bad things happen. Kids get out of shape. They're not, they're not trained. It's hard. I mean, it's really hard to train. You know, I, I don't know how you guys handle that. I know Texas is a little more, probably a little, was a little o more open than, than New York was. But, you know, our kids didn't have, even have gyms to go to. Even when they were home, they, they had no gyms open, most of our kids. So it, it was, it was tough. It was tough as an athlete. But like I said, you know, we, we count our blessings. We, we get to coach football and, and play football, and, and um, it, it was hard on us, but it's nothing compared. I, I hate whining about it because no, it's no, it, nothing compared to the rest of what the world's gone through, but it was tough on us. And I'm, like I said, I, I've never been more excited about a, a spring practice just to get out there and start teaching fundamentals again. Mm -hmm. And not, we, we spent the whole year of 2021 getting ready for games, and it's just, it's not good for the young players to do that. It's not good for training either. I love your mascot, the Great Danes. I, I just think that's so – Yeah, I love unique mascot <laughs> names, and I love the uh, – you know, the mascot, the, the the image and all of that. That's that's really cool. Well, I, you know, when, when I took this job, my wife always wanted a Great Dane, so we have two of them at home too. So, <laughs> oh, um, nice. You, you, yeah. jumped, you jumped right in. A little yeah. bit of a handful? Yeah, we – yeah, they're, um, they're, they're really wonderful dogs, but they are – you know, my wife and I are getting a little older now, and they're big. I mean, yeah. they're big. One's about 175 pounds, and one's probably about 100. 
fifty pounds, something like that. And yeah, they're they're good. They're my guys, though. Blitz and Bruno. <laughs> Greg, can you tell me, uh, uh, was there a time when Albany stopped playing football for quite some time back early on in the program's history? Was uh, Can you kind of give me a, a history lesson with that? Well, there certainly was um, way back probably something like that, but the guy I replaced, a guy named Bob Ford, oh, was yeah. the head football coach here for 44 years. So he, he they started a club program and he took it over. So he coached for – so we've only had two coaches in the past 52 years. Wow. Yeah, and I'm certainly not going to make 44. I can promise you. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just trying to get through that Baylor game right now. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, I know. Coach, uh, I'm sure that you know everybody will be hospitable down here, but you'll hear about the heat. Just know it's going to be even worse than you probably imagined. Hydrate, hydrate, <laughs> hydrate, and humidity. That's what people don't realize when they come to Texas is they, they prepare for the heat, but not so much the humidity. So just friendly advice to, to keep that in mind when you guys get ready here in a few months. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, just one more thing to worry about for that game. But, no, we're we're already understanding. You know, I don't even – I don't have a game time on it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know what time they play, but it's – it's, it's uh, the heat is obviously going to be a huge thing for us. If, and, if, they, and, if, if they play in the evening, it's still so damn hot. Yeah. But but it'd be good. And better to play like 11 a.m., honestly, than it would be to play like at 5 or 6. That would be that would be like playing in a skillet. Well, we'd love to play as early as possible just because I we got to get back. we got to get back and play a conference game. So, yeah. um, you know, we just – whatever it takes. And obviously we're going to play a lot of people and um, – and go out and just play our best football game. I, I don't even know. I don't know anything about their offense. I hope they huddle. <laughs> you know, I know they. I hope they huddle. Wide zone. A lot of. They, a lot they, of, they run the wide zone with uh, Randy. Uh, excuse me, Jeff Grimes, who was at Brigham Young his first year, and they ran the ball really, really well last year. No question about it. But uh, I don't. Do they I, huddle. That's all I, I want to know. If I'm they trying huddle. to think. I don't. I don't know if I they do. I don't recall, honest. Do they? Uh, I don't kind of, know. sort of. Yeah, like I I, I'd know. say, like it's kind of middle of the road on that. Honestly, yeah. It's, well, you guys aren't much help. You're not giving me no, any scouting well, reports. Yeah, no. and, and you know what, though, I'm telling you, after 2020, the way that offense was, we stopped watching <laughs> yeah, it for a while. Really. It was, it was not good. <laughs> hey, Greg, one more thing. I got to ask you this. I'm a lifelong Nebraska fan, and they're not very good right now, and haven't been for a long, long time. Was that pass that Blackledge threw to McCloskey? Was that a? Uh, <laughs> you're laughing. You know exactly where I'm going with this, don't you? Was that a I complete do. pass? Well, here's what I'm going to say to you. I'm not going to. I would never challenge the official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, here's what I would say. I was standing directly on the sideline, 15, 20 yards from that, looking down the line, and I turned around, threw my hands up because he was out of bounds by about a yard and a half. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the ref blew it in. So, uh, and that was one of uh, also playing against Dave Remington. For, I was a nose guard on that football team, so I was head to head with Dave Remington. Oh, you football. have got to be kidding me! Maybe the nope. the ultimate battering ram. Hell, they named this. They named the award after him. They did, and he was special. Uh, the fun part, I played. I actually played a good game against him. Good. Everybody was scared of him. I I just <laughs> stayed real low and try to stay in his pocket as much as I could. <laughs> he was he was something. Well, that, that was good. A, that was a classic. He went on to win the national championship, of course, beat Herschel yep. Walker in Georgia. Uh, I remember yeah, yeah. that game because replay today would have been different. But you know what? <laughs> I, I hate the replay and reviews and all that anyway. Just play the game and see how it goes. Thanks, Greg. Thank you for jumping on with us. We really do appreciate you. No problem. Thanks, guys. We'll have Bye. you on again, too. Greg Gattuso, the head coach at Albany. Uh, he has, uh, he's been great. Appreciate uh, them being able to, uh, as well, Taylor um, with the uh, Sports Information Department, Taylor O'Connor and Media Community uh, Relations to get that set up with us. As soon as that game was announced, I contacted him, and he turned that around very, very quickly. So Yeah, I thought I'd at least give some friendly advice on the humidity yeah. because that's what uh, people do not typically account for and what really – you know, wipes you out more than, than the actual temperature does. It's that humidity down here. But, yeah, a uh, lovely guy, and uh, look forward to seeing Albany make their way here in a few months and, uh, you know, do their thing. And, you know, I'm sure there will be a nice crowd there for the home opener and all that. So, yeah, cool. Cool to talk to him and uh, hear a little bit about his backstory uh, as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. Mike asked whether or not he was Coach Gattuso on the staff when Pittsburgh was upset by Youngstown State. No, he was not. 
he uh, he mentioned Pittsburgh as a part of his his uh, his resume, but uh, he was he was not at the time on that game. Nineteen that was two thousand and. 12, I think it is. 2012, maybe right before he took the job at Albany when uh, when Youngstown beat uh, Pittsburgh, I think, 31-17. And honestly, like, he could have asked any question about Baylor football, and the one question he asked is the one that stumped me, like, about them huddling. Because, I, you know, you don't really think about it. I think they are still they kind sort, of coming in from the sideline. Yeah, like, I, I, you just – I don't know. It's just not something that I even – I guess felt like I – paid attention to uh really uh so yeah i mean that that stumped me when i first had to think like do they do they huddle it's yeah not, sometimes it's not the full you know like hair on it's, fire no it's not it's not it's not like that it is uh, it is offense. more of a yeah. a slow methodical type doing it that way and at times when you have to heat it up and get going they can do that as well all right thanks to greg gattuso albany football last year they didn't have a very good year i think they were two and nine the year before that they were one and three and imagine that they have not had spring drills in three years and yeah right there smack in the middle of the new york state it couldn't do anything and not even uh, where the kids, when they State were home, capital. could not do anything uh, as well. So there's that. Thank you for Greg Catuso and his time. Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports.